okay, recording started. Uh, and I uh, thank the organizers for uh, um, this fantastic event. In the chat, I have uh, written the uh, web address of my slides and the uh, YouTube uh, address of a, a video that I recorded just in case that my electricity or my internet is cut off and you can access it. But I hope that you won't need them. Um, a previous name for this uh, workshop was the landscape of incompleteness that you can see in my slides here, this one. And I thought to myself that this uh, landscape must be a wonderland. Uh, wonderland is uh, full of fairies. Well, these people are not, well, that fairies, but they provided beautiful proofs for the incompleteness theorem uh, that uh, could be as beautiful as fairies. Uh, here, I will consider the proofs of uh, Google, this one, uh, Russell, Kalini, Shaitin, and Bulos. Let me start from uh, Google's own proof for the incompleteness theorem that uh, appeared in this famous uh, paper, uh, which is also translated in his collected works. Uh, Goodell's first theorem constructs a sentence that we, uh, we call G these days, such that uh, G is uh, equivalent to the unprovability of G in T. Here we use probability predicate PRTX, which means that X is T probable. This G uh, is unprovable, but true. Its unprovability uh, follows from this argument. If T proved G, then the probability of G should be provable in T because it's PRTX represents probability in T. So uh, the probability of uh, G in T would imply the probability of PRTG in T. But by the construction of uh, G, G is equivalent to its own unprovability. So T should also prove the unprovability of G. And then T should be uh, inconsistent and that is co uh, contradiction. So G is not provable, but G is true and its truth follows from the soundness of this Q, Robinson's weak arithmetic. So if G were false by the soundness of Q, the falsity of G would imply the falsity of not probability of G or the truth of the probability of G. So uh, if G were false, then PRT of the Goodell code of G should have been true. But the, since this PRTX uh, represents probability, then uh, this means that T should prove G. But above we show that G is not T provable another contradiction, so G is false. Therefore, we have a true but unprovable sentence constructed by Goodell, which shows the incompleteness of uh, sufficiently strong and consistent theory T. Sufficiently strong means that T contains at least Q, Robinson's arithmetic. The second theorem constructs, uh, well, the modern version, of course, not the original Goodell's version, uh, considers this can T, the consistent statement of T, which uh, can be said to uh, be provable to not PRT of the contradiction. So it means that contradiction is not provable. Now the proof goes by uh, using the derivative conditions uh, that, that I, I won't spell out, but just use them. Um, from the construction of G, since G is provable, uh, G is equivalent to the unprovability of G, then PRT G implies the PRT of not PRT of G but the first and second derivability conditions. But the third derivability condition says that the PRT of G implies the PRT of PRT of G. This is a kind of uh, formalization of the first derivability condition that, that if G pro is provable, then its provability is also provable. Now, combine, when we combine these two statements, we see that PRT of G implies the PRT of contradiction or the inconsistency of T. By contraposition, then we have provably, provably in T that the consistency of T implies not probability of G, which is equivalent to G. Therefore, we have that T proves canity implies G. And so canity cannot be proved in T because above we show that G is not provable in T. 
so the, well, this, it is not fair to say that I just completed the, the first uh, the, the proofs of the first and second in components theorems. Uh, it is much more than this, but just in a, uh, we, we just saw a preview of that. Then, uh, kind of five years later, uh, Russell uh, gave another proof for the first incompleteness theorem in the third issue of the first volume of the JSL, in which he constructed a sentence that we call these days a Russell sentence, uh, which is equivalent to the fact that for all X, uh, that uh, codes a proof of R in T, there is a Y less than X such that Y codes a T proof of not R. We, here we use the binary proof predicate. Proof T of X and U means that X codes a T proof of U. Remember that in Goodell's uh, proofs, we used a provability predicate. It was a unary predicate, but here we need this binary predicate of proof. So the argument goes like this. If uh, R, if T proved R, then uh, a natural number should code that proof. So there is some natural number N such that N codes a T proof of R. But then by the construction of R, there should be uh, here, a y less than n such that y calls a t proof of not r. This y less than n should be standard because here n is, a n, is a standard, n is a standard number. So y should be standard, but we know that if t proved r, then t could not prove not r unless t is inconsistent. So this is a, this is a false statement and a, a kind of low complexity, it could be delta one, and so t cannot prove it. So this is a contradiction and therefore R is not provable. But R is true in N because if it were not true, then the negation of this sentence, this red one should have been true. It means that there is an X such that X is a proof, X codes a T proof of R and the negation of this one, which is not important. But here already we see that N satisfies this for sentence that there is an X such that X is a T proof of R. So T proves R. And this is a contradiction because we saw that T cannot prove R. Therefore, this R is a true but uh, unprovable sentence. And it is also pi one. In the same year, Killini gave uh, uh, another proof for the first incompleteness theorem in this uh, mathematician Analen magazine. Uh, which goes like this. Uh, we consider the set of all natural numbers such that T proves that N doesn't belong to WN. WN is the Nth RE set. If we code all RE sets as W0, W1, W2, et cetera, WN is the, uh, the domain of phi N, which is the Nth computable or recursive function. So we consider this set, the set of all n such that T proves that n doesn't belong to WN. This is a non-halting set. But since T is an RE theory, then this set should be an RE set. So it has a code like small t. So let WT be this set. Now Kalini's sentence is that T is not in WT. We show that this is a pi one sentence such that is uh, true, but unprovable. If it were provable, T, if T proved K, then T proved that T doesn't belong to WT. You see here, T proves that T doesn't belong to WT. Therefore, T should, have, should be here. T belongs to WT. But this is, then this is a true sigma one sentence. So it, is, uh, should, it should be provable even in Q. So Q proves that T belongs to WT, which is the uh, equivalent to the negation of the sentence. Therefore, if T is consistent, then T cannot prove K. And K is true because, because it, if it were not true, then T should have belonged to WT. T in WT means that uh, T proves that T is not in WT, but then uh, T proves K, killing his sentence. And we show that this is a contradiction. Again, we see that K is a true but unprovable sentence. In 1950, uh, uh, Killini gave uh, another proof Actually, his aim was to uh, give another proof for Goodell-Russell's theorem. 
Professor Russell's uh, theorem provides uh, an independent sentence, not only provable, but also independent sentence for a given theory. And uh, it's a bit complicated, but uh, it's fun to uh, see it or at least uh, later to work it out. Now, we, uh, first of all, we consider uh, an enumeration of binary computable or binary recursive functions. So uh, the uh, binary recursive function with uh, code u is denoted by phi u. Phi u uh, is halted at u and v by x steps or less is denoted by this one. So if we first consider these uh, sentences, theta, or uh, sorry, eta u and v, which is which says that for all x, if phi u halts at u and v in x steps or less, then there is a y less than x such that phi v halts at u and v in y steps or less. You see the similarity with uh, Russell's uh, sentence. Now we consider this. Uh, uh, this special binary recursive function phi r u and v is the least proof in T of the statement eta u and v and phi s looks for the least proof of not eta u and v. Now this is Kilini's as, as second sentence for a given theory T, which says that for all x if phi r halts in R and s halts at R and S in X steps or less than there is a Y less than X such that phi S halts in, at R and S in Y or less steps. And well, it's a good exercise, a, a bit challenging, I would say, to show that this is, a, this is independent from the theory T. In 1970, uh, Scheiting gave uh, another proof for Goodell's uh, incompleteness theorem, first incompleteness theorem. Its abstract appeared in 1970 and its full proof, which is only two pages, appeared in 1971. It uses uh, kolmogorov scheitin complexity that I will define here, or, or there is actually two definitions for this complexity here, and the variant of Berry's paradox. Well, I will not explain uh, this uh, Berry's paradox here, but uh, let's go to the proof very uh, briefly. Let KW be the least index such that this is the phi, the phi E that I told you about. This is the uh, E's unary recursive function. So this is the K, uh, K of W is the least E such that phi E halts and outputs W at input zero. Here we use <coughs> Killian's uh, recursion theorem to find the C, a constant C, this is called Scheitin's constant, such that phi C of X is, is the pi one of the least Y, such that pi two Y calls a T proof of this statement. Pi one and pi two are these uh, uh, components of a pairing. For example, it could be contours pairing function, okay? Uh, pi one gives the first component, pi two second component, for this one, you see, uh, we used Killini's uh, recursion theorem because C appears and in the index of phi here and also here in the description of that uh, function. Now we can show that for, uh, for no W, T could prove that K of W or homograph complex of W is greater than C. Well, uh, let's go to the proof quickly. If we had some uh, such, we could take uh, one with the minimum of W and P such that P is the code of, uh, P, P codes the proof of this fact. So um, P codes the proof of the fact that T implies K of W is greater than C. By this minimality, we see that then phi C of zero should be W. The, actually, this is the, uh, value of y, the first component is the w then. Since phi c of zero is w, then Kolmogorov complexity of w should be less than or uh, uh, equal to c, okay? And this is a sigma one true sentence then. So t should prove it, but t already proves its negation that k of w is greater than c, and this is a contradiction. Therefore, t cannot prove any of these sentences, any of these sentences for all e greater than or equal to C and 
well for all w but for cofinitely many of w these sentences are true not all of them are true but cofinitely many of, of them are true so we have cofinitely many sentences which are true but unprovable in t by Scheiting's uh, theorem. Uh, the old version actually do not, uh, Scheiting's original version uh, does not use Killini's recursion theorem. Here we uh, define complexity as follows. K of W is the minimum length of program P such that the program P halts without any input. This is an input free program halts and gives the output W. Now we consider these programs PN, which is the first component of the list Y such that the second component codes the proof of this statement. If we compute the length of PN, mm -hmm. we see that, uh, is there a question or it's just some noise? Mm -hmm. Can I continue? Okay, so I assume that there is no uh, question. So if you, you compute this uh, length of PN, we see that, well, it's a constant plus K times the length of N. So it is N has been used in the description of the program. And if N is uh, represented as in, in a binary system, then its length is the log two of N. So the length of PN is some constant C plus K times log of N. So for large enough n, for great n, the length of pn should be less than n because it grows logarithmically. So it some, uh, in somewhere it should be less than n. Um, okay. So, so sorry, I, I just read what was written in the chat. Now we say that T cannot, double, uh, T cannot prove any of these statements that K of W is greater than N if, because if, again, there were some uh, such N, then we could consider the, the one with the minimum pair of W and P, P is the uh, proof of this statement. And then we show that, uh, actually we see that <clears throat> by the construction of that P, P N, is P of great N should halt and output W, but then again, uh, in that case, the K of W should be the, uh, less than or equivalent to the length of PN, which is less than N. And this is again a contradiction because if it is true, it is, should be provable, but T proves its negation. Therefore, again, there are cofinitely many sentences such that are true, but unprovable, and all of them are pi one. Well, if you are still with me, the last proof that I consider belongs to George Bulos in 1989, which appeared in notices of the AMS. Here again, we use a variant of uh, Be uh, Berry's paradox, but uh, by the, uh, using the notion of definability. Let's define uh, this notion that N is definable by the formula of phi in the theory T. If T proves that, the only number that is satisfied by phi is n itself, and, not, and no other number is satisfied by phi. This uh, says that the less than y x says that there is a formula of phi with length less than y such that that formula defines x. Now you see the similarity with uh, Kolmogorov complexity. And this beta less than y of x, beta could, uh, uh, be for either Berry, we are using Berry's paradox, or for Boulos. So beta less than y of x says that x is the least number that is not definable by any formula of length less than y. Okay, Let L be the length of this formula. So we, we can see that the length of this formula, beta less than 10 L of x is actually uh, less than 10 L. And the whole uh, trick here, actually he, here is a kind of a hidden self-reference, I can say, and we heavily use multiplication. If we didn't have multiplication, then we could not use this trick. And of course we know that if we don't have implication, then we have this decidable Pressburger's arithmetic. So there is no incompleteness for Pressburger's arithmetic without implication. Now let B be the least number not definable by any formula with a length less than 10L. So 
Pullos show that this fact that B is the le least number such that is not definable by any formula with lens less than 10L is not provable. It is true, but not provable in T because, because if T proved it, then T could prove that this B is the least, uh, is the only number that satisfies this formula. Uh, this is actually easy to show. So B is provable by this formula whose lens is less than 10L. So D of uh, B less than 10 L should be true. But then we, we see that if it is true, then uh, uh, the negation of beta less than 10 L of B should be provable. But T proves uh, that, be the, that beta less than 10 L of B. And since T is consistent, then we get a contradiction. Therefore, T cannot prove this true statement. Um, actually, it is not a, a, a pi one sentence, but uh, it can uh, be written in a way that it is equivalent, or as uh, Harvey would say, implicitly pi one. It is equivalent to a pi one sentence in sufficiently strong arithmetics, not in logic, but in, in for example, in PA at least. But P is an overkill for, or in uh, I sigma one for sure. All right, so after reading uh, these five great proofs, now we can come to a, a kind of a, a general definition. First of all, let's fix a sufficient stock based theory as B, this beautiful B, uh, such as Piano's arithmetic, if you like, or I sigma one would be enough, or the least one that we know, thanks to Albert Wisser's result, is that elementary arithmetic plus sigma one collection would suffice. And we know by a result of a statement that this is uh, equivalent to I delta one. Okay, I delta one or I sigma one would suffice. All theories that we consider are RE recursively enumerable extensions of B. When we know that RE theories are sigma one definable and they are also delta zero definable by Craig's trick. So for a given delta not formula tau X, we define the theory of tau as the, this set, the set of sentences that are defined by this, uh, their codes actually, the uh, good codes are defined by this for, uh, formula tau. We consider delta not formulas tau x such that the theory of tau is an extension of B E, the space theory here, and is not consistent. Uh, sorry, is not inconsistent. Well, it, it is consistent, let's say. Okay, so we are interested in consistent R E extensions of B, which are uh, delta zero definable. So uh, we, we consider actually all our uh, theories by correct trick. Now we define that a pi one incompleteness witness is a mapping that assigns a pi one sentence delta tau to a delta not formula tau x such that if the theory defined by tau is a consistent extension of B, then delta tau is true but unprovable, unprovable in theory of T i.e. we have these ones. Okay, so we can see that if we have one consistency or omega consistency, which implies one consistency, and that is equivalent to sigma one soundness, then that the, uh, sentence is also independent. Well, we know that for example, Goodell's uh, uh, sentence is independent if our theory is a sigma one sound, but could not be independent if the theory is not sigma one sound. It could be refutable. Okay, so we saw these instances that that uh, uh, Goodell constructs the sentence we call G of tau for a given tau. The second theorem cons uh, constructs is con tau, the consistency of the theory of tau. Russell's theorem constructs a Russell sentence R of tau. Killini constructs two sentences for a given theory, K1 tau, K2. Scheiting constructs infinitely many or co-finitely many sentences, we can call one of them as, how, as C of tau. And Bullos also considers a one sentence, but uh, in a variant that I consider, I consider infinitely many of them and choose the one that, uh, uh, that I like, but how I like this one. So if you have any pi one incompleteness proof, of your own, then it should fit in this the definition that for a given uh, delta not 
formula of tau, which defines a consistent extension of our base theory. It constructs it, uh, a pi one sentence, which is true, but unprovable. You may consider, for example, these uh, sentences, uh, or your incompleteness uh, proof, uh, could construct this sentence, which uh, makes sense by Goodell's second theorem, that the consistency of tau plus the not consistency of uh, tau. We know that the theory of tau doesn't imply the con tau, so the theory of tau plus not con tau is consistent, and its consistency is a true pi one sentence, which is, of course, not provable. But then uh, if you, you come up with this kind of incompleteness by Lobb's theorem, you will see that this is equivalent to con tau, the consistency statement of tau. So you will see that your proof or your incompleteness witness is equivalent to Goodell's second incompleteness theorem. It's a kind of equivalent. So now we, I consider properties of pi one incompleteness witnesses. We saw five beautiful proofs of the first incompleteness theorem, and uh, we can consider what properties they have or they not have. We say that a pi one incompleteness witness is constructive if that sentence, which is true but unprovable, can be constructed effectively or recursively uh, by, uh, from a given tau, the given delta naught formula tau. We say that that uh, incompleteness is a Rosserian or does have uh, the Ross property if it is, uh, it is independent just by the, uh, the, under the condition that our theory is consistent. So we no, don't, don't need this one consistency or omega consistency. If that's the constructed sentence is independent just uh, for a simply consistent theory, we say that it has the Rosserian property. So Rosser's proof has the Rosserian property and Boutel's proof does not. We say that that uh, incompleteness theorem implies Boutel's second theorem, or we can infer Boutel's second theorem by that uh, incompleteness witness if we have this uh, formal derivation that conity implies the tau t because you see the unprovability of data implies the unprovability of conity. So we say that that consistency, uh, that uh, incompleteness proof also proves Goodell's second uh, theorem by its own way. We say that of course, uh, Goodell's second theorem implies or derives that incompleteness if we have the reverse, uh, the inverse uh, implication here, because then the unprovability of consistency or the Goodell's, Goodell's second theorem implies the unprovability of that sentence, okay? Well, of course, then we can say that that uh, incompleteness witness or incompleteness the theorem is equivalent to, in a sense, to Goodell's second theorem if, if we have this uh, uh, biconditional formula. So we, we see that our proof is not that different from Goodell's second proof. And uh, I have, uh, got this uh, for, uh, form of usability uh, definition from this Japanese paper, three short stories around Goodell's uh, theorem by Kikuchi and Kurohashi. Well, I actually translated it by Google translation and uh, you could see how difficult it is. So we say that a, a, a pi one incompleteness witness is formalizable if we can prove that sentence and its unprovability under the assumption of the consistency of the theory. Of course, this makes sense when the theory doesn't uh, prove its own inconsistency. If theory of T plus conity is consistent, then this makes sense that it could prove the truth and unprovability of that sentence. And then we can say that that uh, pi one incompleteness is formalizable. Well, as far as I know, all the uh, proofs that I have seen are kind of formalizable, but uh, here in this uh, Japanese paper, they provide a pi one incompleteness witness, which is not formalizable. Uh, it is really interesting. So <clears throat> about three years ago, uh, my, uh, a former PhD student of me and I proved that this, uh, uh, actually we considered the constructivity and the Rosser property of these five proofs as a, as actually was well known almost from the 30s, well, 
exactly from the third is that Goodell's first and second incompleteness proof is constructive, but does not have the Russell property. Well, because uh, five years later, Russell gave a proof that, that does have the Russell property. And also Kalini's proof, <clears throat> Kalini's first proof, sorry. Kalini's first proof is constructive, but does not have Russell property. These are uh, near, near, uh, really new. Russell's, of course, is constructive, constructs a Russell sentence and has a Russell property. The same is true for Kalini's second theorem. Actually, Kalini uh, gave the second proof actually for the good Russell incompleteness theorem. He wanted an independent uh, sentence. What is a kind of new, well, actually, Shaitin's proof is not constructive. This was also known before but much later than these ones, we show that a variant of Shaitin's proof has the Russell property. So, uh, so uh, co-finitely many of those co-finitely many sentences that Shaitin constructed that are true but unprovable, co-finitely many of them are also independent. So a variant of Shaitin's proof has the Russell property and Bullo's proof does not have any of this property. It is not constructive. We cannot uh, find the Bullo sentence uh, algorithmically from a description of a given theory, and it is not necessarily independent from the theory. Then uh, last year, after this, uh, another paper of mine was uh, published last year in the BSL, uh, and there I consider that if uh, we can derive Goodell's second uh, theorem from uh, uh, the given proofs by those five people or not. Actually, one motivation was that in a paper of, uh, by, uh, of Kikuchi and, and, and his co-authors, uh, they uh, quoted from a Japanese scientist, I forgot the name, that he, he had written in a Japanese paper that one cannot derive Goodell's second theorem <clears throat> from Bulo's proof. Here, uh, I proved it uh, rigorously, formally, that why we cannot prove Goodell's second theorem from Bulo's proof. Okay, let's uh, go through the table. Well, we know that Goodell's first theorem derives Goodell's second theorem, and it, auto, it is also derived from Goodell's second theorem, actually equivalent. The same is true for Killini's first theorem. It is derived, and it derives Goodell's second theorem. Russell, this, this was also known, Russell's theorem implies Goodell's second theorem. You can prove Goodell's second theorem by Russell's technique, but, uh, and, and it was also known uh, from a long time ago that uh, <clears throat> it cannot be proved from Goodell's second theorem. The unprovable of consistency doesn't imply Russell's theorem. The same is true for a variant of Killini's uh, uh, pro second proof here that it, uh, it derives Goodell's second, but it is not derived from Goodell's second. And Shaitin's uh, case is, here is really interesting. It doesn't derive and it, it, doesn't, it is not derived from Goodell's second theorem. It is also true for Bulo's theorem, actually a variant of uh, Bulo's argument that, it, uh, that you cannot uh, derive Goodell's second theorem from Bulo's proof. But an interesting uh, fact was that uh, Goodell's second theorem implies Bulo's theorem. Actually, uh, I thought that I am the first one to discover it, but then uh, a referee uh, reminded that I know, uh, almost everybody knows that. Anyway, I, I wrote a, a, a story in the conclusion that uh, Goodell's second theorem implies Bulu's theorem, but it is not written, of course, in Bulu's argument, or uh, let it, uh, I, I couldn't find any indication in later papers, but uh, the conjecture was true that, that you cannot prove good as a theorem from Bulo's theorem. Okay, now, um, actually before going to the, uh, to the next slide, let, let me uh, again make another comment here. Uh, you, you may be familiar with Hilbert's 24th problem. Well, uh, good, uh, Hilbert made, uh, uh, actually announced or proposed 23 problems in his famous lecture, and all of them are really uh, famous. But then in his, in his hand uh, uh, written notes, it was found that he, in, uh, he intended to have this 24th problem 
as to uh, say when two proofs are the same, when two proofs are the same. You see, we do not have clear uh, uh, criterion for saying that this proof is the same as the one, for example, given earlier, only that when we submit proof to the journal, uh, it goes on the discretion of the referee. The referee recognizes if it is a new proof or a repetition of an older proof, okay? And it, it, this is a kind of problem, but we see that here, these five proofs on a, a kind of difference, actually uh, for uh, Google's first and killing his first proof, I do not have a property that uh, distincts them. They have all, uh, well, actually in, with these four properties, they are all, all the same, but well, it is clear that Goodell's proof uses the notion of probability and Killini's proof uses the notion of recursion theory. Well, then it is arguable that it, if they are the same or not, but Russell's proof is clearly different because it does not have one of the properties that the two proofs have. And Shaitin's proof is different and Bulus's proof is different. So these are really different proofs because they have different properties. Okay, the same is here, you see, uh, these proofs are really different then. Now it's an interesting thing to compare these proofs with uh, each other. So let's have two uh, pi one incompleteness witnesses, theta and psi. We say that theta is derived from psi or psi delivers theta and we uh, denote by the, this one. When this, uh, this holds, the true but unprovable sentence of theta implies the true but unprovable sentence of psi. So the unprovability of psi implies the unprovability of theta. You see that so psi delivers theta. And we say that they are kind of equivalent when uh, they imply each other or they derive each other. And we have this uh, uh, abbreviation here. Now, an interesting theorem is that Goodell's second and first and Killini's first in as witnesses are kind of equivalent with each other, okay? They are derived from Rosser's theorem Russell's uh, theorem implies or uh, delivers these theorems, which is a kind of equivalent to Killini's second theorem. Here, this uh, bar for R and Kaito means that I have used a kind of alternative uh, definitions, alternative formulations of those uh, sentences of Russell and Killini's the second, but uh, they are not derived from Kutel's uh, theorem. So, as we saw, Russell's theorem implies Goodell's second, but is not implied from Goodell's second. To, to make this beautiful picture, I use a substantial variant of Bulus proof. As I, I told you already that Bulus sentence is not pi one. It is implicitly pi one, okay, equivalent to a pi one sentence. And we saw that it is implied from Goodell's second, but does not imply Goodell's second theorem. So it has here. And Shaitin's theorem implies Bulos theorem. This was a new result in that PSL paper, but it is not derived from Bulos theorem. So these are this uh, moral of this uh, theorem. Bulos theorem is kind of the weakest one. It is derivable from all of them. All of the proofs given by other four people imply Bulos theorem. Russell's, and also of course, Killeen is the second, is on almost the strongest because they deliver, they derive all the other theorems except Shaitin's. But actually Shaitin's is the most neutral one. It, it is not derived from any of them and it delivers no other one except Bulos theorem. It just implies Bulos, but it's not, it is not derivable from other theorems. Okay, this is the uh, last to end of my uh, slides. What I have not considered here are the pi two incompleteness witnesses. One of the prominent ones belongs to, belongs to Kripke, who gave a very interesting talk on this proof this morning. And I, for, well, I, I, was, I was kind of sleepy. I, I asked a question, uh, maybe a trivial question, but I forgot to ask the date. But let's go to this. Uh, to the slides. 
You know, the Putnam has written a paper in Notre Dame Journal of Formal Logic, which is in the 2000 <laughs> year of the uh, journal, but the, its uh, history says that it was received on 5th of June in 2001 and printed uh, 15th of July, 2002. But it is this in this issue uh, of the 2000. So it means that journal had some delays. Uh, it, in, in its acknowledgments, we read that this paper is developed from a lecture to the Department of Computer Science at Peking University in June 1984. <clears throat> I, 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 Putnam, Putnam has decided to publish this lecture at this time. This time means 2000, because Kripke's proof is still unpublished. Yes, it is still unpublished, and I don't know if Kripke has given any talk on his proof. But uh, uh, actually, we don't know the date. Uh, it, it is good to know when Kripke came to this proof or when it, it was discovered. But anyway, it is a, a variant of it that at least is published here. It's a PyTOC incompleteness. And there are also other PyTOC incompleteness uh, uh, witnesses. Uh, one of them is by Kotla the late Hendrik Kotlarski, uh, published in 90, one of them published in 1980, which says this that. For every recursively enumerable theory, there exists a function that dominates all the provably total functions of that theory. So that point to sentence which says that that function is uh, total, is provably total, is a true but unprovable sentence. So we have a point to incomplete as witness. So I have not compared this uh, pi to one with each other or with any of the other pi one incomplete as proofs, but it will be interesting to uh, consider this or investigate on this in future. These are the five failures. So those are those are not. And I thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much.